at some point, a shift occurred. And within this shift, the fact that there is a price to and for free got lost. Hello, 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 and welcome to More Than Money, a podcast where we have nuanced conversations about money, business, and life, where we take the time to explore the human side of money because success with money is never just about the numbers. I'm your host, Jacquette Timmons, and I am really, really glad you are here with me today. Before we get into today's episode, I've got a question for you. Do you work as an entrepreneur or small business owner? If you do, do you offer anything for free, whether that is free forever or free as in a trial period? If so, this episode is definitely for you. And so is the next Pricing Made Human Masterclass. It's on Thursday, June 8th at 4 p.m. Eastern. You can RSVP by going to jacquettetimmons.com forward slash pricing dash masterclass. Again, jacquettetimmons.com forward slash pricing dash masterclass. Now, on to today's show. So this is what I heard when I followed up on the status of a potential speaking engagement to deliver my signature talk, financial success doesn't start in your wallet. The person said to me, we went with a different person. They were willing to do it for free. Now, you know, in sales, you hear no often, but you really don't ever like hearing it. So yes, I was disappointed that I wasn't selected, especially since the firm in question is one that has been on my wish list for years. But that disappointment lasted a nanosecond because there are just some things that I don't do for free. And I certainly don't try to compete with free. That's a lesson I learned the hard way. For another nanosecond, I wondered, who said yes to doing this depth of work for free? I was curious, were they a small firm like mine or were they a larger institution? I became curious about, well, what's the design of their business model and what's the role of speaking in it? Where does that fit into it? And what was covering the cost of them being able to do this for free? Now, of course, I will likely never discover who said yes. However, that really doesn't matter. What does matter is that the reason for their no gives you and me a chance to talk about a practice that's been around for centuries, but has really altered the business landscape in recent decades. According to a report by NCH Marketing Services, it is widely agreed that the Coca-Cola, that Coca-Cola, I should say, issued its first coupon for a free glass of Coke in 1887. So for free is not new. Giving away products or enough of it is a proven marketing strategy. It can help consumers assess and confirm if what you are selling is truly what they want. And this applies whether it's a free glass of Coca-Cola, a pink spoon of ice cream, sample sizes of makeup or perfume, or trial offers. That said, free is never really free it gets subsidized in some way. And there are two sides to this coin called free. There's the consumer side, and then there is the business side. And the question for those times when you are a consumer, as well as when you are an entrepreneur or small business owner offering something for free is this, are you cleared eyed with how free is getting subsidized? When you are a consumer, do you think about what the value of something that you are getting is for free? 
As an entrepreneur, a small business owner, are you strategic about the three W's when it comes to if you should offer something for free, aka the when, the weather, the why? When I work with my coaching clients who have businesses, one of the exercises we do is to evaluate their offers, their products and or services. And we break down those offers to identify the job of each offer. And from my perspective, each offer has two jobs. There is an external outside job that is, you know, what might it do for a prospect or what is it doing for your clients and your customers? And then there is an inside one. And that is, is it a lead generation offer? Is it your signature slash pillar offer? Or is it something in between? And then we take a look at the job of each offer relative to its price, individually and collectively. And one of the goals of doing this kind of exercise is to get a bird's eye view of the price range of your offers from free to low to mid-range to high, and to understand your cost associated with each offer from innovation, production, and delivery and execution. Doing an exercise like this quickly reveals that a high-priced, high-cost offer should not, emphasis on not, should not be available for the price of free. In my case, being a speaker for hire is one of my pillar offers. And my costs associated with my speaking engagement, those are high on all fronts from the innovation, the production, the delivery, the execution. And so it's why I feel very comfortable and confident saying no when someone asks me to speak for free. And quite frankly, it is why I really, really appreciated the fact that the firm didn't even come back to ask me if I would be willing to do it for free. I really respect that. But lest you think that I am anti-free, I am not. I provide all sorts of content for free. You listening to this podcast, this is not behind a paywall like some podcasts are. This is available for you for free. Similarly, if you're watching it on YouTube, that's available to you for free. When I write my blog and my weekly email and the financial wheel exercise that I've referenced, that's available to people for free. I view these as different channels that help to build my brand awareness regarding my particular perspective when it comes to the intersection of money, business, and life, particularly my specialty of helping people navigate complex you know, financial and business scenarios and situations and the decisions that come with. And you know, look, they are also lead generation tools and channels for me too, so they help in that regard. I also don't charge for discovery calls. And I don't do that because, or I should say, I've made the choice not to do that because from my perspective, it is what helps the prospect to understand the approach that I take to my work and why. And it's an opportunity for both of us to assess if we are a fit for working together. Like I said, giving something away for free is not new. But at some point, a shift occurred. And within that shift, the fact that there is a price two and four free got lost. Just think about how many times a day you go to Google or YouTube and search for an answer to something. You can perform unlimited searches 24 seven and yet never pay for a single search. Or for those of us that remain active on a variety of social media platforms, think about how we don't have to pay to engage with our followers or with the people that we follow. Now, I just said we don't have to pay because sure, we don't pay in dollars because in these scenarios, we are the product, but we certainly pay a price. The price just happens to be in the form of our attention and data. And I think in some instances, the cost of free got disconnected from the price of the underlying product or service. 
And because some larger businesses have been and continue to be willing to absorb the cost of free, an expectation has flourished that all businesses should too. So my fellow business owners, here are my parting words for you today. There is absolutely nothing wrong with providing products or services for free. However, be crystal clear about these five things. Number one, know why you are doing it. Is it to qualify a fit? Is it to experiment and test the appetite for and get feedback on an idea or a product? Is it part of a short-term strategy, strategy route that's connected to a long-term strategy? Or is it something else entirely? That's number one. Number two, be sure you are not providing for free something that has high costs associated with it, especially if those costs are fixed. And I'd add, be sure it isn't something you would actually sell at a high price. This is where the adage, why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free, applies to business. Wink, wink. <laughs> Number three, know your boundaries. Is it something you were willing to have available for free forever? Or is it free for a limited time? Again, example, trial periods, trial offers. Is it a gift? If it's a gift, if it's a gift for loyalty, be clear about that. Or is it a gift for someone spending more, right? So the whole idea of buy four, get one free. But here's the fifth one and something else that I really want you to consider. And that is what will be your litmus test for understanding how your prospects, clients, and customers perceive the value of something that you are offering for free? Do they appreciate it? Or do they feel entitled to it? Be very, very wary of the latter. Ultimately, ultimately is what I'm trying to say, my friend. Please remember this. Free is a price. Somebody, somebody is subsidizing it. And whilst it can be an important marketing strategy, make sure you are not competing with free because that's a losing proposition that extends far beyond the money. Well, that is it for today, folks. As always, thank you for listening all the way until the end or, or if you are on YouTube for watching all the way until the end, I do thank you for doing that. And before you hop, if today's episode sparked an aha or reflection, I'd love to hear more. So please send me a DM on Instagram or take a snapshot of this and post it on your socials and then just tag me. And if you've listened this far and you are saying to yourself, yep, I need to make sure my prices reflect the free that I am subsidizing, then join us. Join us for the next Pricing Made Human Masterclass. It is on Thursday, June 8th at 4 p.m. Eastern, and you can learn more about it and RSVP by going to jacquettetimmons.com forward slash pricing dash masterclass. So once more, thank you for listening or watching today. If you'd like to show appreciation for this podcast or maybe this particular episode, please share it so we can reach more people. If you happen to be listening on Apple Podcast, please take a moment to leave a rating and a review because we do read them. And likewise, if you are on YouTube, please comment below so that we can get more traction there as well. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, here's how you can do that buymeacoffee.com forward slash jacquette, buymeacoffee.com forward slash jacquette. I'll be back with another episode. I hope you will too. Until then, remember, it's about more than money.